Hello brothers and sisters. The prosperity gospel is on the rise amongst U.S. churchgoers. Now let me just add, not just U.S. churchgoers, worldwide, South Africa as well, everywhere. It is a big, big push right now. An increasing share of American Protestant churchgoers believe that financial prosperity is part of God's plan for them and that giving more money to their church and charities will result in blessings from God, according to a recent study by Lifeway Research. So you give to the church and the charity and that will force God to give to you even more so you prosper. So you've basically got a genie, not a God. Yes, I said it. The study conducted from September 19 to 29, 2022 and released this week found that 52% of churchgoers say their church teaches God will bless them if they donate more. Up from 38% in 2017. You know what else is up? The amount of millionaires in those pulpits. Additionally, 76% believe God wants them to prosper financially. An increase from 69% in 2017. The belief that they must do something for God to receive material blessing has also risen to 45% from 26%. In the last five years, far more churchgoers are reflecting prosperity teachings, including the heretical belief that material blessings are earned from God. Scott McConnell, Executive Director, Lifeway Research. He noted that financial struggles due to inflation and the pandemic may have contributed to the shift in these beliefs. The prosperity gospel or word of faith movement teaches that believers can use God for material gain, a belief that contrasts traditional Christian teachings. This belief is particularly prevalent amongst younger, less educated churchgoers with 81% aged between 18 and 34, and 85% of those aged 35 to 49 saying God wants them to prosper financially. I'm not saying God wants you to struggle. I'm not saying God can't bless you financially if he so chooses. I'm saying the Son of Man who came to save us didn't own a house, didn't own a car, even though... Some people have that whole joke about the, the triumph. He went forth in triumph. He didn't have any of those things. The Bible literally says in the New Testament, the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So again, the thing I've said before, I follow someone who was a homeless Jew when he was on earth, moving from place to place, giving everything he had of his all to teach of what was really important, not building houses and owning more things and showing how powerful they could be to make a difference in the world. If that was God's choice for them, God would do it. But if not, the most important message was the gospel of salvation, the Brita Dasha, the new covenant that he came, that he bought with his life on the cross. The greatest price paid to save us from death, which we richly deserve because we are all sinners and all have fallen short of the glory of God. And here we are at the very edge of eternity before everything goes down in the final week of Daniel and everybody is getting more and more focused on financial wealth, financial prosperity, having a genie, not a God, caring more about prospering than caring about those that are going lost at the very edge of eternity. We should have the heart of Christ. And yes, God's got us. And yes, God hears our prayers. But you know what? God had Job as well. People don't want to talk about that. God loved him too. God kept him through everything and sorted him out. He didn't sit there on his heap praying for financial prosperity and saying that's what he deserves. He said, Though he slay me, yet will I serve the Lord. I know that my Redeemer lives, and one day he will stand on the earth. His focus was relationship and God, as should be ours. 
we desire Jesus Christ, he will see to us. He will carry us through. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we're facing. But regardless, our focus is him and him alone and taking him to all of those who are still lost in darkness and sharing that gospel, the Great Commission, which was not given just to pastors. It was not given just to evangelists or teachers or prophets. It was given to every believer in Jesus Christ. Go ye forth to all nations and all peoples. Give them glad tidings and good tidings. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. That God breaks chains and sets people free. And anyway, prosperity is going to lead to CBDC, which is going to lead to them controlling your money anyway. And again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. If God blesses you financially, bless the kingdom. Give where it matters. But to chase that wholeheartedly and treat God as a genie that he has to give to you because you've given. That is the wrong motivation. And guess what? Oops, God sees the heart. You've just wasted your money then. I've seen many testimonies, even here on this channel, where people have given from a good place, expecting nothing in return. And God has blessed them over and beyond what they were expecting. But did they go into the initial giving expecting that as a genie? No, they just gave from the goodness of their hearts to ministry and God blessed them abundantly. Now that beautiful testimony has been twisted to you can now force God to do what you want him to do. Be very careful. Focus on relationship because your soul is more important than any other comforts. I trust the Lord. God knows what my needs are. God knows what the ministry's needs are. God knows what we need to do and can't do. And God provides. God touches. God leads. God brings. And in God, I will trust until we walk arm in arm into the kingdom. God bless you all. Have a great day. Shalom.